everyone, welcome back to Dwayne and Nadia, Food, Travel and Fun. And today I'm going to do another recipe and here it is. I'm going to do crock pot butternut squash soup. Uh, it was one of those recipes I never really tried when I was younger at all. I don't recall anyone making it until the day I tried it. Uh, I was definitely, I believe, in my 40s, first time I actually made this soup. And I've been making it ever since. It's really good, really enjoyable, and fairly easy. I do different takes on it. I have tried variations. It's nice because you can kind of go into a little bit into the sweet realm, but I would not go too sweet with it. It, it is not butternut squash puree the appetizer that you have at Thanksgiving. It is a soup. So it needs to feel a bit like a soup. It's very hearty. It does have like cream cheese in it, which really, you know, gives it a great consistency. And there's some butter and onions. Uh, today, I'm actually gonna try something I haven't tried, although I know it should be a safe way to go. Uh, I have tried it with apple, added in to give it that little sweetness. And today I happen to have a couple of very sweet, very ripe pears, which I feel, uh, going to be a great little compliment and push us into that sweet side just a little bit without going too far. I'll use a sprinkle of brown sugar to really kind of bring it over the top and adjust it as I go. Brown sugar is absolutely optional. I'm using a light brown sugar, but um, once again, I do like to have a little, just a touch of sweetness in there. So um, about to bring it all together. Uh, as you can see, I got all my ingredients here. I will give you a, another peek at everything prepared. Basically, you take the squash and dice it all up, get it nice and small. Uh, we, it uses onion, which you'll brown in the pan with some butter, and that brings out the sweetness of an onion by getting it slightly browned, and that helps kind of adjust the flavor as well. And we'll go from there. Everything goes in a crock pot, it just cooks on low for hours, and then it's done. Hey, uh, I know I'm cut off a little bit here. All right, I just wanted to show something quick as I'm doing some of the prep. I'm using a regular peeler to peel this. And I'm hoping that this really comes through well. But, all right, so this is fully peeled. Now I'm gonna spin it and show you. See the green lines that are in there? Those are the, they're essentially like veins that I use to feed the fruit so that it runs through. You're not fully peeled until you're through all the green lines and you arrive at just orange or yellowish orange colored fruit. Just so you know how deep to peel it because you don't want to leave those in there. They actually are a little bitter and they may change your the way it comes out for you. So just thought I'd share that. Take a chance here, take a second here and show. Once you know you're fully peeled, I'm gonna end up cutting this, dicing it, getting all the seeds out, whatnot, but don't leave the green lines. I really hope they show up well here. I don't know for sure that they do, but there you go, thanks. So I know you can really see the green line in this picture, so I just wanted to include it. So next step here, I've got everything diced and prepped. I'm about to put the onions into the fry pan with some butter and cook them down a bit, get them a little browned up, do some caramelization in a, to really get the sweetness out of them. As you can see, I've got all of my, this was that one large butternut. It produced about eight cups, which is an eight cup bowl of um, diced butternut. Uh, the average recipe is actually going to be about half this. I'm basically making a double recipe. I've got a lot I'm going to be sharing, so why not? And uh, so normally you can, do, you can do this recipe. You can cut it in half and do it with a regular two-pound size butternut. This was a four-pound that gave me the eight cups. So that's it for now. We'll be back in a minute. I'm going to take it to the pan, caramelize the onions, and I'm going to show you everything going into the crock pot. It's just going to cook for several hours on low, and then... It gets blended up. I may use the immersion blender. I may put it in a regular blender. Gets mixed in with the cream cheese and smooths it all out and ends up that nice, really, really rich, creamy soup that uh, is just so good in the end. So here we all go. Right. Welcome back, everybody. I am over here caramelizing the onions. Uh, they're getting a nice browning color on them. Actually, they're, they look ready to go. They have really got them all nice and browned up. I used, about, I used a good size onion, a nice healthy yellow onion, and about three tablespoons of butter to cook them in. I've already added the, uh, I've added six cups 
of chicken broth to my crock pot, which I have on right now and I'm warming up. And I'm gonna add these onions and the butter into this mix because butter is a very smoothing, it makes it for a nice creamy uh, soup whenever you're doing anything that's like a, a cream of something or something like in this case, I'm gonna be adding cream cheese. So yeah, so I've got that in and I'm just gonna add in the rest of the ingredients, everything except for the cream cheese itself, which we bring in later. And this is already starting to warm up a bit. Uh, I got a couple of tablespoons of that light brown sugar. I feel that that's going to be funny because I am, in this case, adding in my diced pears, which were nice sweet pears that I happen to have, and I got added in. And I'm going to go with all the little seasonings. I love garlic. We are big garlic fans, so I'm easily adding. A teaspoon and a, at least a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half to this. I'm going to adjust that later on. Um, we like pepper, but I don't want to go too much on the pepper. It's probably about a half a teaspoon at most. It's a quarter to a half teaspoon. It is to taste. All of these seasonings are to taste, except with the exception of nutmeg, is definitely not to taste. You have to be very sparing with nutmeg or it just overwhelms what you're cooking, especially in a crock pot where flavors really blossom. So I'm just going to add, literally, that's it. A, a Just two little shakes of nutmeg and that's done. Cinnamon is a bit more forgiving. I like cinnamon in mine and I might have an I'm, I'm going to go light as well. I did two, maybe three shakes of the cinnamon off the shaker. But once again, I'm not really trying to bring these fit flavors so much to the forefront as I am trying to have them enhance what we've got going on here. And those are very common flavors that mix really well with butternut squash as, you, as you've seen in other recipes. So uh, I'm only going to lightly salt for now because we're using a chicken stock that already has salt in it and you can always add salt at any stage in the cooking process later on. Uh, I love parsley. Remember, this is gonna get pureed. So the parsley, I'm using uh, about a teaspoon of parsley in here as well. The parsley is also gonna disappear because it is gonna be pureed later on. So anything, everything in here ends up smoothed out. You don't see it. This is a smooth, creamy, thick soup when all is said and done. And let me see if I can safely get my squash in here without making a big mess, splashing it everywhere. But like I said, it's a lot of squash. It brought, it doubled the uh, volume of soup that is in this container. And we're even going to add that eight ounce bar of cream cheese. So that's going to bring it up a little bit more as well. So right now I've got it on low. I'm actually going to put it on high, let it run at least the first hour and a half on high. And that way it just starts that whole breakdown process. I want this squash to break down, get nice and soft. I want the onions to really be like just almost like just melt. So when it's time to actually puree all of this with a blender, it comes out smooth. So that's going to be it for now. That's uh, basically that's all you really need to do. Get this going. It's a little bit about the prep and it's not even a lot of prep. So. Uh, it probably took me 20 minutes to prep everything, maybe maybe half an hour top. Depends, you know, you spend a little time chopping up the squash. But other than that, piece of cake, worth getting going. And we'll come back later on when this thing's ready to go into the blender. And I'll show you that process and we'll wrap it up. Hey guys, I just noticed that I didn't add in the poultry seasoning that I use. Essentially, this is a way to get sage and rosemary into this recipe. I don't use a lot of it, but those flavors also complement the final product here. So I did just add some and I even tasted it and it's going to be excellent. So um, please, uh, sorry, I forgot to add it in, but there it is, poultry seasoning, or you can use sage, rosemary, you can even use thyme if you like that. I know there's some thyme in this. I'm not a huge fan of thyme, but that's me. Um, please, uh, just wanted to make sure that you guys saw that part of the recipe. I didn't leave it out for you because that's, it is one of our uh, key ingredients that make this, that really makes this work. Thanks. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this has been cooking on high for a couple of hours. I let it go a little longer. I 
kind of chopped it up a little bit, broke it up with a little utensil I've got. And right now, I have a funny whisk that I like to use. That uh, it doesn't, things don't get caught up in it. So nice, it's got little balls on the end. And it's breaking it up really well. So the squash is definitely soft enough to move on to the next step. As you can see, it's starting to get the colors going through as she's broken up really well. But I really want this to go to completely smooth. That's really the way this, the way this recipe works. So I'm going to try a little bit with the immersion blender. And I'm just going to run it. I'm going to stop the video while I run it. I mean, I'll start it, but it's just so noisy that um, you're really not going to be able to hear me. So, But you can watch a little bit. I'll do a little with it on. And here you go. Well, it's not too bad. But um, yeah, I'm keeping it immersed, so it is really cutting down on the noise, which is good. And uh, it's starting to do a quick smoothing. You can see this is really, it's pulling everything in quite well. I'm really doing a better job of blending than I was expecting. see any kind of lumps left over on this and now it's starting to look a great consistency here so at this stage we add in the cream cheese let it go for about another half hour or so I may run the blender again to really make sure it's all smoothed out and nice but yeah this ended up this is really gone as well as I could have asked so let me go get the cream cheese, I'll add it in, we'll see if we can get it to thicken up and smooth out a little further, and I'll show you that. Okay, so I'm back, I've got my sour cream, and I'm going to add it in. I've warmed it in the microwave to soften it up. I'm going to add this in. I like to, I chunked it out, you know, made cubes out of it, so it got nice and soft. And it only took, that only takes about a... You do like a 30 second mix and then you let it go for, you know, cube it up and then go another 30 seconds, another 20 to 30 seconds, but it doesn't take over a minute to do the cube. It is a eight ounce square, standard square of cream cheese. And let me uh, break out the immersion blender again and see how it goes. I'm going to put that back in and I believe that will get everything nice and creamy smooth like we really want here. So. Oh yeah, I can already see the color is lightening up as it breaks down the sour cream into really small little, uh, the cream cheese into really small little bits. And uh, uh, it's already given a, a bit of a creamy appearance to it, which is definitely what we're going after. I'm going to let this run a couple more minutes. And then we're going to let this warm up for another 30 minutes or so. I'll probably hit it once or twice more with the immersion blender to really make sure it's nice and smooth. And we'll taste it out. Uh, maybe it's back home, so maybe she'll be able to take and try it out for it. So this is our final little run here with my squash soup. Butternut squash, of course. And it is absolutely ready. She's beautiful. It is warmed up to a nice level. I'm only gonna do a small sampling here because we're going out to dinner soon. And we are actually going to be putting together another little video for you guys at one of our, an old favorite restaurant for both of us. So that's coming. I won't say which, but you'll find out soon enough. Uh, you can garnish this with a little bit of parsley and make it presentable and stuff. But right now, all I really wanna do is give it a taste and I'll let you guys know what I think of it, and we'll go from there. Nadia is getting ready for dinner, so it's just up to me to try it out tonight. And here we go. Oh. It's really smooth, really creamy. The cream cheese just oh, makes it wonderful. It's got a slight sweet, because I put the pear in, in this one. And I ended up adding extra salt to kind of balance out the sweetness, because I noticed that the pear may have made it even almost too sweet. 
So went by a little bit of extra salt and then I came back and I actually added a little bit extra of that poultry seasoning. The, you know, the sage, rosemary is really such a like great note to have come through in this recipe. It's really more of a side, it's not a meal. You know, when you put a bar of cream cheese in something, you're making a side dish. And I will say, I am quite pleased with the outcome. This was a, uh, this is very much to me comfort food. You know, I said, it's, for the, it's on the side and it'll go great with so many meals, especially with holidays coming up, things like Thanksgiving. Squash soup is on the list. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm Dwayne, of course, Dwayne and Nadia, food, travel, and fun. And until next time, remember, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.